Hi guys and welcome to today's tutorial on weathering and erosion. It's a really really important uh, topic in the junior year examination and one that sometimes students struggle on a little bit so please watch the video and I'm sure it will help you a lot. Okay remember to uh, check out our other videos on our website examvision.ie, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash examvision and follow us on Twitter and Instagram. So, first of all, we need to know what is weathering, okay? So, weathering is the, break, the breaking down or wearing away of landforms on its spot. And what I mean by on its spot is it does it there and then, and it does not transfer, uh, transfer the material down in its path, or it just leaves it, it just does it there and then on the spot. So, this brings me on to erosion. What is erosion? Erosion is the wearing away of material and transport of the material and then the deposition of the material that's broken down. So these two things weathering and erosion we can classify them into one group called denudation and denudation just means that, that they are, that's the breaking down or the removal of rocks uh, through the action of either weathering or erosion. So we're going to look at weathering and with weathering we have three different types of weathering. The first one is mechanical. The second one is chemical and the third one is biological. Now the first two, mechanical and chemical weathering, are more, are more important than biological because mechanical and chemical come up most in your examination. So the first thing we're going to look at today is mechanical weathering. Mechanical weathering is the breaking down of rocks into smaller pieces, but it's because of the sun of frost. So the, the example that we're going to look at today which you have to know is freeze thaw action. Okay, so you need to understand how freeze thaw action weathers away rocks. So we're going to look at freeze thaw action, and this is because of frost. So this is mechanical weathering because of frost, and it's most evident in usually mountainous areas because you need to have a frequent te temperature change so you need to have the temperature decreasing into the minuses so going dropping below uh, 0 degrees celsius and then going back above 0 degrees celsius during the day so what actually happens is the rain collects into the the, cro the like the crack of the of the rocks and then during the night, what happens is the water freezes and expands. So when you freeze water, it expands. And during the night time, when the temperature drops below zero degrees Celsius, the water in the crack freezes and this expands. This causes the rock to expand a little bit. Then the next day, when the temperature goes back above zero degrees Celsius, the water, oh sorry, the ice thaws back to water and the water then falls deeper into the crack. This process repeats itself over and over again. When the water freezes, it actually expands by 10%. So this causes a 10% uh, uh, increase, um, which causes the rock to eventually to crack until it splits, as you can see in the picture four here. So as you can see, I've made a few little notes um, for you. Now these notes are again short, so please 
use these notes, but also go back and make your own notes as I'm explaining. Because when I'm explaining uh, with my pointer, I'm I'm giving you a lot more information. So you can use these notes here, but you should rewind the video and take down extra notes that I've said when I was explaining it. So that brings us to the end of our tutorial on weathering and in particular looking at freeze thaw action. Please go on to the next, if you go onto my YouTube channel or my website, examvision.e or youtube.com forward slash examvision, you can get the next video on this, which we will be looking at chemical weathering and we'll be looking at some of the features that chemical weathering uh, makes, which is really important because it is a question that comes up quite, quite frequently on the exam papers. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Please, please, can you leave me some feedback? I know I always ask, but I really do appreciate it when you leave me feedback at uh, the videos. Um, and if you have any suggestions, please leave suggestions on ways I can make the videos better or, or maybe just tell me the things you like um, so I can use them in my future videos. Thanks, guys.